Hi everybody, this is your host Pearls doing a brand new Let's Play of the Prelude to the Second Sky. Um, I have kind of wanted to play another Take a Hold for a little while, and I'm going to do this one since uh, his other one that I've recorded, Pickle Seller. I'm going to kind of wait a little bit since uh, some other players have recorded that as a Let's Play. But there, this is a Smite Master selection called Finding the First Truth. It's set just before the events of The Second Sky, which I just finished an LP of, and I think it ends up right at the older holding vats where Second Sky begins. So this will be a nice like transition into perhaps somewhere towards the end of The City Beneath and how Beethor ended up where he was at the start of The Second Sky. So in the city transit tunnels, Beethor was approaching Rooted Hold again. He had stored some shreds of purple cloth in his knapsack from his stint as a slayer with the hope that they would serve as some form of identification, proof, or maybe even just a template for some sort of suit tailor to work with. To enter, he needed to show himself as a member of society, holding an official position and, most importantly, as having a capital N name. However, what Bethro needed more was a new, than a new suit was a new goal. All he had were rumors that something terrible was going to happen. What Beethor needed was knowledge. Knowledge of what the event was and how to stop it, which we already know. He was going to the Grand Library, and he was going to ask about the Grand Event until they gave him answers. Look at all these tunnels. What do we have here? Some beta testers like Curiously Shy Rabbit, which we all miss. Jay Bloodstein, which I think is Boy Blue? Yeah. Larry Merck, awesome. Jeff Ray, dot, dot, dot. Silly Man, Boy Blue, Reb, Rebel, Bob, Jason, and Syntax. And thanks to the whole administrators in Careful Games for assisting me in creating this a Smite Master selection. Chaco. 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 George Winifred. Fried? Winfried? I don't actually know how to pronounce Winfried. There's, that's a special, special kind of last name where it's like he could be all of those. Just like the first name of his nickname. I think this is intentional. Good job, Jacob. All that effort just got one Chaco. lousy crate, probably filled with moldy turnips. Okay, so this is when uh, we had the not not Sten as Bethro. It was, um, I will think of the name in a second here. <laughs> I'm blanking it out because I'm trying to remember. Uh, that's okay. Um, we got Sten back for the second sky, but it, the this particular voice actor did a great job. Oh, Snacko. Snacko is his name. Okay. Uh, I think it's interesting how a, a hole becomes a Smite Master's selection. I think you just make a really good set of levels, and the whole administrators are like, hey, guys. They tap each other on the shoulder and say, this is really good, and then they turn it into a game surrounded by the story. Uh, how do you want the introduction to be handled? I want to go see the city and a more detailed story information. Give me a summary. I want to get right to the puzzles. Let's go. Let's see what this is doing. Beethor sauntered into the city. According to Imperial documents, he was a citizen. And seeing as he was a citizen, it was his home. However, he now understood one reason why he had no respect for the rooted empire. It was too impersonal. Nobody enjoyed his presence, speaking collectively, or viewed him as anything but a novelty, speaking individually. At least they had moved a few things around while he was away. Good old Rooted Empire. I want to go to Dugandy right away. He can't stop me. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, apparently that's not going to work. This looks all vaguely familiar. Yeah, there's this cool corner where things are falling apart. The Grand Library. Beethor returned to the Grand Library once more. He had to admit that, at this point, he had a lousy record with this place. The sole member of the staff he had actually conversed with was very polite, to be sure. Still, Beethor had felt vaguely guilty that every time he visited, he had to be the bearer of bad news or unhelpful advice. It was almost poignantly sad, in a way. The building meant to be of most, most assistance to your average citizen was never of any help to Beethor at all. To this point, the library had only been ever helpful indirectly, though the, through the machinations of that pit thing. Beethor sighed and entered the garden foyer. First Slayer, if I remember the announcements correctly. What would you like to know today? First That's Librarian, me. right? Hope you guys got that butterflies section fixed. I worked hard cleaning up your mess, and I'm sure people out there are waiting with unfinished book reports or something. I am glad to inform you that the butterfly text collection is currently under review. Yay! Unfortunately, it is slated to require several more months to restore it completely. Rest assured, I have top men working on it. Is there some other knowledge I may provide? Mm. Well, I was wondering if you have anything on the grand event. Oh, that? Certainly. 
Let me see. <laughs> grand event. Grand event. Ah! We have exactly one book specifically on the grand event. Doesn't okay. sound so grand to me. One is all that is needed, for academic completeness's sake. What's in it? It exposits all known history, extrapolates future timelines, outlines current preparations, and even displays a majography of surface relics. Great! Can I have a look at it? <laughs> Funny, like, looking forward knowing what the grand event is, and what b will goes through in the second sky, um, how accurate not, that was. Don't tell me. It was in the butterfly. Future section. timelines. At present, the text is not in the library. Of course not. Just like anything else I want to look up. Dear Sir, our grand library has knowledge <laughs> on every subject in the world. This being a library, and a grand one after all, we accept all patronage, striving to the utmost in serving up knowledge with the greatest efficiency. Well, I mean, what you're you are trying to say is you let some bloodthirsty plants gobble it all up. Your assumption is, to the best of our knowledge, incorrect. We lend our books in order to spread total knowledge to the aspiring citizens of the Empire. The item I've alluded to is currently lent out to 99 Oh, articles. no. Oh, well, I'm aspiring, too. Do you have a second copy? No, it's never been checked out before this year. Fortunately, the next edition is scheduled to be completed in three review cycles. Mm. Anything else I could do to learn about the grand event? Well, you could try reading up on cutting-edge tunneling technology, transportation yes. algorithms, analytical mm -hmm. kinematics, True. applied thermodynamics, genetic engineering, <laughs> morality and ethics, epistemology, somnambular tendencies, crowd control, logistics and military <laughs> operations, <laughs> gravitational theory, fundamental tectonics, and finally, the penultimate negotiations and imperial addresses. That should give you sufficient background to get an wow. entry-level position that in one of the committees working on the new copy. Is I not actually gobbledygook, but Can't pretty I accurate. Just, uh, find this archivist? Get the book from him? If you want to find him, I've heard he's working near the Perfection Complex. Oh, God. oh no. That's miles and miles away. It'll go take watch me Alex forever help to get you to go figure out ah, how to get there. So time is a concern. How unusual. Well, perhaps you can try the previous borrower. I was told he was planning to make a copy of the book. Perhaps he has his own now. Sure. Could be worse. All right. Here's his last known address. There. With directions. Thanks. Thank you for patronizing our establishment, First Slayer. Have a pleasant remainder of the day. Ooh. All right. I've, um, I've got an address. I can't read it because it was plot device. What do you want, kiddies? No, you got to just... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Beethor glared with distaste at the memo in his hand. The librarian's handwriting was perfectly legible, which was one point in its favor. But the creation was accomplished through, only through the use of drawing straight lines, even though the curves in the letters were only comprised of straight lines in an arc. <laughs> As he walked out of Rooted Hold and followed the map on the other side of the parchment, Beethor, Beethor idly wondered just how aggravated some Empire founders or bureaucrats somewhere must have been for this writing style to become mandatory or commonplace. Did I? I must have skipped ahead on accident. Oh well, that's okay. Hello, my name is... I can't believe it! First <laughs> Slayer now? My name is Jovis, but you already knew that, right? Eh. Oh my god, it's Jovis. You know, in the Perfection Complex. Or did you forget that already? You are looking <laughs> for me to ask me about the Rooted Hold, remember? I've been there already. I'm here for a book about the Grand Event. Yeah, unbelievable, isn't it? I'm afraid I don't have the book Oh my anymore. god, this is going to be I like your princess is in another castle. Receptionist but... Back in the perfection complex. If you want to read it, oh, you'll god. have to go back and ask him. Well, I've heard that you've made a copy of the book. Ha, ah, not exactly. I've only copied some of the most interesting parts I mean, that of the sounds book. at least you halfway useful. You can find them on four scrolls on the islands in this level. How am I supposed to get onto those islands? Well, go down the stairs and travel through those levels first, and you'll be able to reach the islands. Um, okay. I mean, it's I can do that. It's just a token safety measure against the archivist employees. Because he's the, the worst. The levels aren't really that difficult, and definitely easier than the rooms you've solved in the Perfection Complex. <laughs> For you, that sounds really comforting. <laughs> Once you've read them, come back to the main hub. Thanks, In the game. meantime, I'm going to pack my stuff. Do you have that much to pack? Well, most of it is already packed. But I need a new toothbrush, I guess. Oh, and my goldfish. 
I almost forgot him the last time. <laughs> Chobus is and I really have to really beat something. him before packing. I'm sure oh, dear. you can get there and back <laughs> while I go and buy myself a new toothbrush. <sighs> Alright. All okay, that was that was something. What, kitty? No, I, I'm recording right now. You're just going to have to sit down there and be a good cat, which I know you're not going to be. Oh, my God. Okay, well, this, this, is, this looks like something. What do we got here? The decoy level, nope. The slayer level, double nope. The exit level, can't even do that. The mimic level, god! <laughs> and the go. Oh, these are like the four worst topics I could ever hope for. What have I gotten myself into? Okay, so I have a feeling that, yeah, these are the exits to the various rooms, and once, upon exiting, I should be able to... Uh, get to whatever's in there. Which is fine. So this would be the guard level. Which is cool. Yep, I need to be able to be right there. And this would be the... Uh... I don't know. What would they have? What? <clears throat> Slayer level, maybe? I don't see a mimic potion. Anyway, let's, uh, let's just go left to right. Decoy level. I don't mind decoys. They're not the worst. Decoy potions, like the Mimic potions before them and the newer clone potions after, are first and foremost useful. Architects have a habit of only including useful things in their rooms when they are intended to be used, and on top of that, used correctly. Potions are regarded with suspicion by the majority of Delvers in the Smite Master's Guild. After all, the very existence of a potion in a room can only complicate its solution, as the potion must be used correctly. Alright, so let's see what we got here. Hmm... Da, 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 da. Oh god. Well, oh no, I can do this. I can't do this room? Note, the bomb at 1515 has a northwest facing force arrow beneath it. So this guy is uh, northeast facing, I'm sorry. The bomb at 16 has a southwest force arrow. The briar root has a north arrow. Okay, so I can... Okay. I'm not sure what that does, except that prevents this from growing, I'd imagine. Oh, jeez. This room looks complicated. I'm going to just take a quick perusal before I do anything fancy. Oh, jeez. What are they? I'm going to just not enjoy... Okay. <laughs> Ormites cover this entire chamber. Your sword will be taken away and given back by the Ormites at the entrances. This one looks vaguely manageable, so let's take a look. Are these... Pressure plates? Okay. These look weird. So what does this do? This toggles that, allows me to leave. So this, all this does is... I'm not really sure why I'd want to do that. <laughs> this frees him. Oh, you know what? I bet this has something to do with... This adder being needed to be led into certain rooms. For example, when I go through here, the adder, huh, the adder will knock this and knock himself off though. So I don't really, okay, I don't quite get that yet. What do you do? I don't think I understand just yet. Is it? Do I have to actually step off of it? No. So it's, it's one of those where it's the first step. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let me just stare closer at the screen for a moment. So, like, this one makes... All right, well, let's just see what happens. You know what? That's actually kind of interesting. If I if I get one step ahead of him, it's, it's not going to toggle it, but it... See, he's going to, yeah, he's going to do what he wants to do there, and that's fine. Uh... So he moves first, and I can actually step like that, and he'll go, and he'll get bigger. Okay. This is where this gets bizarre. Eventually, I need this to be opened, and the only way this is going to happen is he needs to be long enough to reach this room. Now, what I don't know, I'm going to actually just assume that it's not the end of the world, and that he can actually not kill himself on these things. What does this do? Alright, so he... It's not too long for that. Oh, I see what's happening. So if he'd gone to this one like later, he would have 
have been he would have been killed. I think he has to. He does he come out ahead during that ordeal? Yes, he, he loses two, but he gains three, so he gets one longer. Uh, this one, come on, you can do it. There you go. That kills him, so he needs to be longer before he gets in there. This one is okay. This would uh, let's go here. Comes out ahead. I feel like he loses because of his tail there, and it's like an unfortunate loss. I bet I could optimize that a little better. So let's let's assume that I have to make all the right decisions. So this is obviously a great first Delver's room thing. All right, let's there we go. And now a really good option because it seems smart is this one. He only gets hit once, he gains a bunch, and he doesn't get, bite his tail. Now, he might be too long for this guy up here. I just kind of want to see now. Why does he avoid... That's kind of strange that he doesn't choose to go in my direction there. That's, maybe I'm just misreading uh, something. Uh, see, now he's... Nope, he's just not... Okay, that's perfect. I have a feeling this was the right set of moves here. Now, the other guys over here, I don't believe, have any such restriction. So, you go ahead. Okay. Um, all right, I'm going to guess this is long enough now. It's just sort of an order of operations thing. Yep. And let's see if he's... <laughs> he is one too long. That's funny. Okay. Well, uh, what could I do about this? Two too long, maybe? So, if he's two too long... Is it okay? Is that how I'm supposed to interpret that? He's too too long. He's just barely long enough, but too long. Okay, so let's go this way. Come on. Because he hits that, that toggles my door that I need. But he needs to. He needs to be too shorter. Okay, so that's fine. Interestingly, I have an idea. So if he needs to be too shorter, then let's just take another trip through memory lane. Memory lane being this room here. I could probably take advantage of the fact that adders will eat their own bodies in a sort of weird way, but I am going to not take that strategy because it's imprecise. So that takes down two, and hopefully should make him short enough. And now I just gotta go through these other ones, and it should be fine. I just kinda of hope it's gonna work out like that. We'll, we'll find out, I guess. This would be great if it did. Maybe? That looks better. Beautiful. That was actually pretty fun and fairly manageable. I enjoyed that a lot. Okay. Let's see. What do, um, we have some over water, but I don't think that's going to matter. <sighs> I see a secret here in the corner. That's going to be exciting. I get five decoys. I'm not really sure what this is about. Decoys aren't the things that drop pressure plates. And can I put decoys on... I think I can put decoys on these guys. Sure. Okay, that's interesting. Because I'm going to need to be able to clear all of those. So if I put a sword over... Uh, over a tile, I won't be able to open this guy up. These aren't a bridge at this point. So, wait. So, yeah, so it makes sense that I should put this guy here, right? Yeah, 
seems pretty logical. Uh, and that I'd have to put... I mean, I have two options for this guy. And no options for this guy, except this one. So I'm going to do him, get him out of the way. Uh, my southwest options I have two, and I do have two south options. Now, I only have an east option here, which limits my choices a little bit. So that takes care of him. With him out of the way, my north east options are on an all time low. And my southwest options are on here. And there we go. That sorts that out pretty nicely through deduction. I'm not really sure how I'm going to kill the roach. Oh, wait, no, I get the, my sword back right here. Okay, let's see here. Uh, it doesn't seem preposterous that I would do something like... I don't think I can kill the... The mimics. Or decoys, I guess. Huh. Uh, let's see here. How am I going to make this work? Can't, yeah, I'm pretty sure I can't, because the, they, they're toggles, right? Oops, I can't actually tell. Huh. Now, this is interesting. Yep, I can't. So, let's do it like this. was also not too bad of a room. <laughs> Look at me. Feeling good about myself. Ch uh, Jack, that's just buttering me up. Trying to make me feel better about myself. Whoa! This is kind of cool. I can actually sneak down in here. Um, except, no, I can't. What is this about? Oh dear. Uh, nope, this is a hard nope for now. I'm just going to keep it there so I have something to restore to. Hey, this looks kind of good. Uh, oh, I thought... I thought this was just... Yes, that's what I thought. I can't... I'm not actually going to move. Well, this is bizarre. What the heck? Invisibility potion. Um... Okay. That is most interesting. Most interesting indeed. So the invisibility potion is to ensure that I have I don't kill the decoys because while I'm invisible, they're not going to want to travel onto the hot tiles. So, and that's what releases them. So I have to be able to move these things. It's kind of clever. Okay. Not too tricky, but still neat. Okay, I'm gonna make sure that yep, he's in his influence, he's in his influence, and he's in his influence. So I should be good. Should be all I need to do, actually. Perfect. Also fun. Neat. Not too hard and fun. Maybe I'll actually enjoy this hold after all. <laughs> Until I could do the secrets or something. Um, Alright. So this locks me in and makes me invisible. And gives me a slew of decoys to work with. Which now I have to understand what's going on. Now as I learned in the previous room. I can place these on pressure plates. But I'm not sure what that's going to accomplish for me. It looks like I, my goal is to lure the roach. But no, there's ortho tiles right there. That doesn't make any sense at all. So what's going on? And it doesn't appear that I can break through anything either. This is really strange. Well, let's just see what happens. It's not going to be like too crazy. Let's just do this. So 
So then I'm going to... So since I'm invisible, the roach gets stuck there. I'm not, and this just closes its... Alright, well, let's just play through this. I'm actually kind of puzzled, but... Uh, how, what's, can I place one here? This does actually reach the roach. But it kills me really quickly. That's a problem. So let's assume that I actually just can take full advantage of all of these. Uh, what do you do? Oops. What's the point of you? You just opened that guy up. So, and I can't place something on there anyway. This guy opens. So once I've used this one, I cannot use that one. Well, let's see how that goes. I still might be able to use this one. He dies in a turn. So no, this is... <laughs> oh no, I'm not dead yet. Um, hold on, something, something, something interesting is afoot here. So these bombs, remember that this guy can't actually grow. If I... He would kill that. I'm not sure that I care about that bomb, though. If I hit the bomb, what happens? He makes that area completely unusable for me, which is interesting. Um, does that buy me a turn somewhere? Because it has to one little extra thing on the edge to grow on, maybe? I don't know. This is all very strange. Okay, what happens if I blow up you? What do you cause to happen? You... But why? I don't understand how to... Hold on, I think I actually do see how to kill it. I have to save one Mimic here. That's how I kill the bridge. Yep. This isn't going to save me turns. Huh. And you are going to just immediately... That's so strange. Okay. Interesting. This is the puzzle, in my opinion, right in here. I don't really grok what's going on right now. That's okay. I, I don't need to grok what's going on. I can just kind of look at it for a little bit. So when I place one here... There are two turns in which that makes that nice. I do, however... Huh. What's the point of the bomb? Is this gonna... I mean, I could easily just place a mimic like this here. And that's sort of on the level I need it to be, because there's no, there's no point putting, like, in order to get the roach here, this is going to be a placement of one of the mimics, but I feel like this bomb is important somehow, but I don't know why. Huh. Well, let's solve one problem at a time. This makes that happen. The best chance I have of getting anybody to boogie towards me is that. Because that gives me a lot of extra room. And then maybe this guy? I honestly don't think this would make a difference either way here. Because this is stuck there. So now, the most logical thing to do seems to be... Oh, I see. So if I, if I put one here, this will lure the roach. But the problem is, he's going to prefer it in every case. So like, for example, if I put one here... He's not going to prefer it. He actually needs to, to die. Now, is there a way I can make that bomb go off, is the question. That doesn't involve me... Maybe. Well... I could always do this, but he then dies immediately, and that doesn't save me any... Now I don't believe these can reach, even. Uh... So, somewhere along the way, some, one of these moves was not the right one. Or at least it don't feel like the right one. Can you reach from here is a good question. 
No. This doesn't do anything for me. It does buy me, a, like, a turn, though. No, it doesn't. Not really. Oh, but those hit these two. That's so interesting. Okay, so I could, like, replace at that point. If I absolutely needed to, I could totally do a couple things. Okay. I'm going to keep this video a little short. I'm going to puzzle this one out for sure between episodes. Let's, let's, let's take a look at the... Uh, um, the other room, just because just I'm working with a new system here, and I want to make sure it's like not complete crazy garbage, just your normal run-of-the-mill garbage. Let's take a look at some other levels. That's my exit, so, so much for that. This is probably another wing of the four, if I had to guess, because symmetry's awesome. Mm, maybe not. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> what? Um, okay. I see maybe a secret down there. Uh, that looks annoying. I guess I'll worry about that later. And this looks kind of good, actually. Okay. Alright, whatever. I got stuff to work on. Uh, this has been your host, Pearls. Doing. I'm going to start. Go back and do this one for sure next time. But I think I understand. I just need to poke at it a little bit. It's a good puzzle. Um, uh, this has been your host, Pearls, doing a decoy level in Finding the First Truth by Chaco. Until then, I will see you all next time. <laughs>